Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. I want to talk today about a new currency that was just launched. A war is going on right now for your mind and the perception you have over what currency is more valuable than another currency. I don't know how to explain this properly. There is a difference between God's money, which is gold and silver. It has been placed in the ground specifically for a reason to use as monetary value. However, God made it very clear that gold is what he uses as, as, as precious as it is in our world. That's what he paves the streets with in heaven, right? There's a point to that. But with that being said, it is the most precious monetary element we have on earth because there's only so much. It's, it's finite, right? And it takes a lot of energy to get it out of the ground. And he who owns the gold rules the world. And we're seeing that right now with central banks across the world right now that are buying up gold, not, not Europe, not America, and not Canada. So you have the world splitting into two from the east and the west are splitting into two, right? The east is full of countries that are joining the BRICS alliance, the nations of countries that are wanting to, to do something different than what the dollar in Europe, the US and Europe has done to the world for the last 50 years. Even though the US is the world's reserve currency as of right now, and it's failing so fast, it's crazy. I want you to understand that it has been in conjunction with the Bank of England, right? This story is out of Zero Hedge, and it's entitled, The IMF, which stands for International Monetary Fund, unveils new global currency known as the Universal Monetary Unit to transform world economy. I want you to understand this is going to fail. This is not going to work, okay? The uh, Western powers are trying so hard to hold on to power. They are losing it so fast to China, Russia, India, Brazil, and South Africa, along with a myriad of other countries. It is insane. As of right now, today, there is a certain bond in, in uh, China that is actually uh, backed in gold, and you could actually trade it in and get physical gold in your possession. To give you an idea of how important that is, first off, China is the world's leader when it comes to importing gold and buying gold. It also does not let its gold out of this country, out of its country, that it mines. It tells the mining companies for lack of, I'm going to do a very easy explanation. They say, we're going to give you the going rate for gold, but it's going to us. We're buying it from you. We're not letting the Western world get this. But they want to bring so much validity and trust into this currency that they have a bond that's denominated in gold or it's 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 backed by gold and they say if you trade it in you can actually take physical possession so they're allowing other countries if they wish to take gold out of their country it's a very big deal but china knows how big of a deal it actually is with other countries with trading partners things like that okay so so you have to understand how powerful this is and all the west is both europe canada and the us is just fairy tales and just insane insane lunatics that are, are using sorcery. And I, I'm not joking. It's actually in the Bible, in the book of Revelations. They're using sorcery to fool you. And part of that sorcery is the illusion of wealth and, and real wealth, okay? While the wealthy right now in the world are buying gold and selling certain asset classes, you're buying those asset classes and you're selling them their gold. Literally, I go to pawn shops and I ask them how many people are turning in junk gold, junk silver, and you're melting down. They, they say quite a lot. People are selling it. They're selling the most valuable thing um, that they should be holding on to so that they can pay their credit card bills. All right. So think about that in this con. Think about that. Put that in the context when we talk about this story. A new global currency just launched, but 99% of the global population has no idea what just happened. The universal monetary unit, also known as Unicoin which sounds like unicorn, right? Is a international central bank digital currency that has been designated or designed, sorry, to work in conjunction with all existing national currencies. This would set off alarm bells for all of us because the widespread adoption of a new global currency would be a giant step forward for the globalist agenda. Um, the IMF did not create this new currency, but it was unveiled at a major IMF gathering. So let me explain something very important that people need to understand. The one world currency that eventually will come into place that they talk that, that, that God talks about in the Bible is a digital currency. You will not be able to buy or sell it without this at a certain point in life. And those digital currencies or CBDCs all have the same code base. They are, they are being designed to uh, be interact with each other 
transfer and, and talk to each other, integrate with each other, right? But you won't understand most people and they will be fooled. Even the elect will be fooled, it says in the Bible. Because what's going to happen is they're all going to have different names. So even though they sit on the same rails, and when I'm talking about rails, I'm referring to a certain blockchain like XRP or Stellar that they're being designed to ride on right now. And the IMF has actually came out in the past and said that they want to use uh, Ripple Labs. They want to use XRP. They want to work with them to build these uh, central bank digital currencies, which are imagine like a train car, but they need rails to move on, right? Very similar to what happens right now with, it's exactly what happens except for much more technologically advanced than what happens with the SWIFT code. When you wire money from bank to bank or you wire money from your bank to another country, you have to use what's called a SWIFT code. All right. That's the train tracks that the dollar sits on that moves around the world. Other currencies also have to use SWIFT codes. OK, but in the future, they will be using a blockchain address and within people holding private keys and all of that stuff. OK, that's what XRP was designed for. So what the elite wants you to, to hide is you're going to see I have the Chinese digital currency. Well, I have the US digital currency. I've got the IMF's new digital currencies, all these digital currencies. They all talk to each other because they have the similar code base, right? The same code base. But when you look at them, they're all different, right? They all work, they have their different names, but they're all one currency, one system, all right? That's what people need to understand. It says, today at the International Monetary Fund Spring Meetings 2023, the Digital Currency Monetary Authority announced their official launch of an international central bank digital currency that strengthens the monetary sovereignty of participating central banks and complies with the recent crypto assets policy recommendations proposed by the IMF. Start thinking XRP. There's a reason why. And there's a, a, a division that's even happening between the IMF and the Federal Reserve because they are calling for a more transparent uh, a system of monetary policy when, when it comes to uh, you know derivatives, printing money and things like that. The Federal Reserve and the US government wants to stop what they're doing. They want a blockchain solution so that they can monitor what the US is doing and they can monitor what China's doing. They, they want some, some transparency between central banks. You're not gonna see that level of transparency just you know when we le get, get to that level. You're just not going to. They're not going to want you to see the trade that goes in and out of China. They want to see that. As a matter of fact, Christine Lagarde was just on record being fooled, being de deceived by a YouTuber, I think it was. And she admitted the reason why we got to go with this system is because for we have more control. We want the control. We want control. So you have to realize that. So this is going to blockchain, right? And whoever owns the 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 the, the tokens, for lack of better terms, I'm just trying to stay really level. Uh, 30,000 foot view, right? Of the, whatever system is adopted to run these central bank digital currencies around the world, you're gonna have a lot of money. Because just like every time you use Swift code, when you send a wire, you need to spend $25 to use that system. Or an international wire, I think, is like $50, right? So you have to pay the people that invented Swift, start thinking Rothschild, start thinking those guys, right? Uh, all those guys, all right? Um, so you're gonna have to use some of this token to send this these wires essentially right but it's way more than that like mastercard visa all these things will be running on whatever this this blockchain is so there's a battle a war going on around the world over who's going to win and i personally that's why i, I invested in xrp now i'm not telling you to go out and this is not a financial advice investment advice as a matter of fact you see me not talk about crypto a lot lately even though we have what i believe is a dead cat bounce because crypto is so heavily tied to the stock market values because of what you just witnessed with the FTX fallout and how it can affect the system, um, it can go in reverse. The system starts to fall, there's cracks in the stock market, and then that take down the price of crypto as well. So I want you to understand that there's still a lot of risk there, okay? Um, it says right here, the press release says that the organization consists of sovereign states, central banks, commercial and uh, retail banks and other financial institutions. The DCMA is a world leader in the advocacy of digital currency and monetary policy innovations uh, for governments and central banks. Membership within the DCMA 
uh, consists of sovereign states, central banks, commercial and retail banks, and other financial institutions. Basically, it says it sounds like a secretive cabal of international banks and national governments conspiring to push new currencies down our throats. We're being told that the universal monetary unit is crypto 2.0, and those that created are hoping that it will be widely adopted. I'm telling you right now, it's going to absolutely fail. If you're putting your money into this, I'm not, I'm telling you, right? Look, I can't give financial advice. But after a while of being involved in the crypto industry, uh, investing in stocks, being an investor for what now, 25 years, I'm telling you, there, it doesn't seem right to me. All right. That's not, I'm not telling you to not buy it or go buy it and all that kind of stuff. I can only tell you that I'm not buying it. The economic ninja would not be investing in this. And this is what they're trying to push, but they're not just trying to push it to retail investors. They're trying to push it to institutional investors and central banks. That's what they're trying to do. But I, ha again, have to stress the BRICS nations are getting big they're, and they're going to cause the West to fall. And it is a big deal. So what do you do at the end of all this? What do I do? Okay. The economic ninja vaults gold. The economic ninja loves silver. The economic ninja likes to keep some cash and bank accounts spread out in multiple banks, getting ready for deflationary falls, you know, and, and opportunities. The economic ninja is getting out of debt. All right. That is what I'm doing. Um, I believe that if you do that and you're well diversified, you're always going to win, right? Um, but you have to get prepared because times are changing and a currency bubble that's happening right now is popping. And it is going to be magnificent, a magnificent opportunity for you to grow wealth, a magnificent opportunity for you to level up and go beyond your wildest dreams, but also most importantly, an amazing opportunity for you to help other people. So take that information, whichever way you want. Again, none of this is financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. I don't wear that special name badge and am deemed able for, to tell you what to do and then have no excuses when the markets drop out, just like in 2008. I hope you guys got something out of this. The Economic Ninja is out.